In this video, I'm going to show you seven combat related modules for D&D or Pathfinder 2E for Foundry VTT that I recommend. That's right, roll initiative. I recently tried to run combat without these modules and basically rage quit. These are going to be essential to running combat smoothly. These seven modules are listed right here. The sixth module is for Pathfinder only and the seventh module is for D&D only. I'm sure no one's going to argue in the comments about that though, right? Stay tuned for more advanced D&D and PF2E modules. Hit that subscribe button below. The first module I'm going to talk about is a small but powerful one called Initiative Double Click. Here's what it does. Without Initiative Double Click, you have to right click update participant and change their initiative value manually which is fine but this just allows you to double click on it wow! and change it that's super simple super easy and super useful in case you want to change somebody's initiative on the fly that's it that's module number one let's go to the next one this one's called monks combat details by iron monk and it's a really good module this is the module i cannot run combat without there's a lot of settings in this so bear with me this is worth it this one will work for both dnd and pathfinder tree as will all the modules in this list but let's go ahead and check out the settings and see what this does first thing is it won't it'll prevent combat from starting if not all initiatives have been rolled which will be useful in case you accidentally hit that button a little too quickly it prevents token from being removed from the token hud which means that you cannot technically click on this accidentally removing that token from initiative also extremely useful as i've accidentally hit that button more than once order initiative is so that the player's unrolled character you as a dm see them at the bottom but the player will see it at the top let's see the player's view actually and as a player, that initiative's on top. Perfect. You can prevent a prepared spell from being changed just in case someone tries to cheat. No one is going to try to cheat though, are they? You can add placeholder combatants by clicking on this. When you set up combat, you can make sure you can set up a combat playlist. That's how it works. Just set up that combat playlist. And then when you begin combat, it'll play it automatically. So far, this module's been pretty useful, but is it going to be worth the hype? Let's keep looking at it. It'll give you the calculated CR for the encounter. Now, another setting I recommend you do remove is clear targets after turn is over and force it with force client settings. It's another module. Actually, this depends on your table, but some of the players get annoyed when their targets are removed after their turn. So just keep that for them if you if you have players like that. This next one goes with the previous one. But again, my players like keeping their targets sticky. So combat round messages give a round and round start here. Show start token is extremely useful. Let's assume it's Eagle's turn. She's going to move and you'll see a little shadow of a token right there where she started. Pan to comb attempt. Easy enough. When your turn starts, pan to the token you control. Let's try that. You can automatically select the combatant token on this turn. You can have the sheet pop out on their turn. When the combat is created, automatically switch to the combat tab. Let's try it. By creating combat, it switches to the combat tab. Excellent. When the combat is started, automatically switch to the chat tab. So let's quickly roll initiative again. And when we begin combat, it'll switch to chat. Super exciting. It'll even pop it out for you if needed. It'll remember the position. So you can decide who you want to pop it out to. You can close the combat when done. When the monster dies, it makes it invisible to the player. There's a better module for this actually i'll get to it in a second really important setting is automatically set defeated but it's really useful when an npc hits zero hp to have it automatically be set as defeated automatically reveal combat tracker character whenever you reveal a character this setting it, it'll start off hidden but if i reveal it It'll reveal it in the combat tracker as well. Auto scroll combat tracker so that the combatant is always visible. If it's way too long, for example, add combat bars uses a different setting for the resource bars while the token is in combat. I'm not going to go too much into detail for that, but you can set that up later. Show the next up notification. We'll give you a notification when it's almost their turn. It's a very small notification at the top. It's not obtrusive, so I recommend you select it. You can change the notification sort of settings here. There's a lot of settings for monks, but absolutely worth it. I cannot do combat without this one. D&D or PF2E, this is essential. So definitely install this if you're running combat, which I'm sure you are running combat, right? But if you thought that module was cool, you better check this one out. It doesn't add as many things as monks, but it's just as crucial. Combat Booster by the Ripper 93 is is invaluable for combat. The first thing it does, as you can see automatically, is add a turn marker to the current player and a turn marker for the next player. You can edit all the turn markers sort of 
details here. You can even change the style of token marker you have underneath. But the coolest part of this module, and it's D&D only, but let me show you what it does and it'll save you so much time as a game master. Let's assume it's this goblin's turn. He's gonna attack Crusher. As he uses his short bow and rolls an attack roll, if you right click on the goblin, you'll see the recently used action short bow on his token. It actually goes on all the goblins. So if you want to use this goblin now and target Crusher and use the bow, perfect. This works for player characters, non-player characters, everyone. Amazing HUD. And it's not just the one action, but multiple actions go on the HUD. There are some options for this combat HUD. You can see how many recent items you want to display, how many columns. Some of these options are going to override or overlap with Monk. So either pick one or the other. Don't select both. Right now, Mark defeated as in Monk, so we're going to skip that. Body Pile, though, is what I was talking about with Monk's earlier. This is a better version of Monk's set defeated. For example, if I kill this goblin right now, it's going to remove it from the battlefield and put it in the top left of the screen. You might not think that's super useful for a small scale battle, but when you have dozens of tokens, this is going to be a lifesaver when it comes time to cleaning up the battlefield. Overall, some of the settings overlap with Monk's, but I use it for the Body Pile. I use it for the recent actions and i use it for the token sort of marker underneath it's still pretty useful and i recommend you install both monks and combat booster let's move on to the next module another one of rippers smart target allows you to target even smoother and faster on the battlefield smart target effectively does a simple thing which is allowing people to alt click to target tokens you can also change some other settings here like default founder behavior or always target which is just clicking on non-player owned tokens will automatically target them another cool thing it has is if you set up a template let's say for example you set up a fireball that's a very big fireball this is it fireball those poor goblins won't know what hit them but if you go to the token controls on the left and then alt click inside the template, it actually targets everyone inside the template, which is really, really cool. Smart target also allows you to use the player avatar or the token portrait as the target reticule instead of the colors. The next thing you can do is also change the target indicator to something different. If you want to have a target indicator, there's multiple options here. You can choose any one of them. And that was yet another Ripper module. Man, this Ripper is a pretty cool guy. He's got a lot of modules. Did you know he's made over 60 modules for Foundry VTT? That's a lot. Were you wondering where that top bar came from at the intro of this video? Yeah, this really cool looking carousel. That's a Ripper module and it's free. Check it out. Carousel combat tracker pops up at the top of your screen when you roll initiative. I like going to settings and making it extra, extra large. This looks really cool, doesn't it? It's also unobtrusive at the top, which means you don't need the combat tracker popped out lastly i can have the carousel combat tracker show resources like hp on the portrait itself and it respects metagaming information as well that's a really cool ripper module but if you like it and want to support a developer that is doing this full time check out this one as well and it's absolutely worth it hover distance is a module that tells you how far away an enemy or an ally is just by hovering over them the coolest part though is when you get to flying. Let's say this horse learned how to fly and is 100 feet up. If you want to target it with a firebolt, Eagle knows the exact distance due to math. Pythagorean theorem. This is mind blowing. By subscribing to the Ripper's Patreon, you get access to 41 premium modules, including some really cool ones like Skill Tree, which allows you to create beautiful custom skill trees for PF2E or D&D or really any game system. And Progress Tracker, which allows you to set up a progress bar for chase scenes, victory point subsystems or whatever you want. Check out the link down below for Ripper's Patreon and thank you so much for sponsoring this video, Ripper. Let's move on to module number five health estimate this is actually pretty crucial health estimate is pretty simple it gives you the health estimate of allies or enemies no longer does a player have to ask hey how is the enemy looking because they can just hover over and hell if i reduce it to dead it'll be dead if i give it five hp it'll be badly injured you can change the behavior settings here and the estimation settings are actually from Baldur's gate the original ones not the new ones i didn't realize i needed health estimate until i realized how much it helped with letting players know how an enemy's rough status and realistically they would see whether it's 
gets injured or not injured in game, right? It's not metagaming, it's not the actual HP pool, it's just the estimate. This module is one of the most important ones on the list if you run PF2E. PF2E macros has extra macros for every situation. Just go to the compendium on the right and find PF2E macros. We can find the macros here and the most useful ones are by and far, let's start off with Floria Blows. As the John is a monk, we'll use the macro, no MAP, and it'll automatically combine attacks and damages for you. There's other macros for different abilities like Double Slice, Certain Strike, Hunted Shot. You can also use the Aid macro to aid a party member by targeting the party member and clicking Aid. As he aids, it'll give him a little buff here as Harsk. We able to put the aid circumstance bonus on his next roll and when he rolls it, it automatically removes it. You have an exploration activities macro where you can set up a exploration activity and it'll actually put the icon on top of them as well. Also the repair for party macro allows you to repair for somebody else in the party. This module has quite a few useful macros that would be useful both in and out of combat. I just figured I'd show you them in this video. Let's move on to the D&D version of my last module. The reason I rage quit while I was trying to make a combat video is I didn't have drag ruler. This module's coming to Foundry in version 13 as an innate feature, but in the meantime, let me just show you how it works. Right now, if I drag Eagle, it'll actually tell me how far she can move with her current movement speed. And if I move her past her current movement speed, it turns yellow, indicating that she dashed. Lastly, it'll turn red when she's out of movement. Look, it's super simple. It's coming to base Foundry, but it's super useful and I couldn't live without it. It's actually integrated into PF2E as a system sort of thing, so you don't need it for PF2E. Did you think these were enough modules? I don't think these were enough modules. Why don't you check out the modules playlist I have that shows all the different types of modules you can pick for Foundry, PF2E, or D&D. They're all over here. Check them out. Toodles. All like and subscribe.